Hey, what's going on friends and theme park fans? This is Silver Sticks here for another Sticks Top 6 where I count down the best and worst that theme parks have to offer. The Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow Walt Disney World's Epcot Center Not even originally intended to be a theme park, but rather a fully functioning self-sufficient utopia run by Walt Disney himself, is truly an unparalleled look into the future and into the mind of the man who was making it all happen. Today, Epcot is broken up into two separate sections, Future World and the World Showcase, which combined bring a bit of our Earth's past, present, and future to the forefront with brilliant shows, dining experiences, and attractions. And today, as you can see by the title, in our continued efforts to look over the best and worst attractions at the four Disney parks, we will be heading into the glorious Epcot Center to do just that. Of course, as always, just so we're all on the same page, the way a Styx Top 6 Best and Worst episode works around here is simple. Numbers 6 through 4 are the top 3 worst, while numbers 3 through 1 are the top 3 best. Super easy stuff to follow, I know. So finally, with all that out of the way, I ask you friends, will you join me as we count down the best and worst attractions at Walt Disney World's Epcot Center? Starting off our list over in the Canada Pavilion in the World Showcase, where we'll be able to find the Martin Short narrated Circle Vision 360 film, O oh Canada. And before everyone gets mad at me, I actually do love the Canada Pavilion, the beautiful flower beds and lakes leading up to the mountains and waterfalls. It's breathtaking, truly. But this attraction seriously brings down the life of the area. Even the queue and theater the movie take place in are all masterfully built and just blow my mind, but then you get into the screening room and you realize you have to stand for the entire 14 minute film, which doesn't seem like a long time, but while you've been walking around in Florida all day, just take my word for it, the last thing you want to do is stand even more. And then the film has the audacity to commit the most heinous crime of all. It's boring. Like, seriously, this attraction genuinely feels like something you would find in a history museum, not an amusement park. And just like in a history museum, I see people on their phones, people yawning, and people having side conversations the entire time. It's like the film just can't hold people's interest. Obviously, I'm not speaking for every single person when I say that. I'm sure if you're from Canada or you're a huge Martin Short fan, then this movie would probably be a blast to check out. But for the general Epcot attendee, I'd recommend just avoiding this one. I should, however, at least point out that starting this month, O Canada is under refurbishment and is set to come back featuring updated projections and new footage to offer a much more enhanced experience. So, let's all cross our fingers on that one, and maybe, just maybe, when the refurb is complete, O Canada can drag itself to the top. But for the time being, it absolutely deserves its place as one of the worst attractions at Disney's Epcot Center. Swimming over to Future World, we'll be able to find a great ride concept executed poorly in The Seas with Nemo and Friends. And what do I mean by that exactly? Well, simply put, this ride is just infested with screens. For every awesome set they've put together, they ruin it by just slapping a giant screen in the middle of it. And I guess the argument for that by fans of this ride might be that animatronic undersea creatures maybe wouldn't look great or something. But Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid does just that, and it's one of my personal favorite attractions in all of Walt Disney World. Whereas Nemo just feels empty to me. Really, other than the jellyfish scene or the anglerfish, there's just screens everywhere and some rather annoying audio that plays too quickly so you hear it repeated over and over and over. Honestly, the best part of this ride comes towards the end when you get to see the real aquarium with the animations over top, but I've never even seen anything interesting in there either, so it's hardly even worth caring about or mentioning. Overall, this entire experience just feels draining, and even with its short wait time, I've never once felt satisfied after I hop off of it, so unless you're a die-hard Finding Nemo fan, 
I'd say the seas with Nemo and friends can easily be skipped right over. Sticking around in Future World for our number one worst attraction, where we'll be able to blast off into the great unknown in the 5 minute and 38 second long centrifugal motion simulator experience, Mission Space. And first off, I should say I really do love the idea of this attraction, actually experiencing what the astronauts endure during space travel, including G4s, hypersleep, it just sounds awesome on paper, right? But in practice, this attraction is honestly more of a look into how sick a spacecraft can make you. Dead serious, every single time I've been through this attraction on the orange or green mission, I see people wobbling around as they get off the ride, I see people puking, I mean there are literal barf bags in the ride because it's such an issue, and I hear people saying how they need to sit down and cool off after taking it on. I, I mean, it's really not even fun for most people, and that is just really not up to Disney standards of quality. Like, for instance, I'm someone who has a super tough stomach for simulator and screen-based attractions. I can take a lot, probably because I spend so much time in front of screens and stuff at home, but regardless. Even for me, every ride-through of Mission Space just feels like a game of Russian Roulette, like one in every three times I'll ride it, I'll end up sick for the rest of the day. I guess the small percentage of the time that I ride it and don't get sick are fun enough, but I rarely even find it worth it to try, and I really just recommend against taking that gamble to anyone else traveling to Epcot. To start off our three best attractions today, we'll be sailing back over to the World Showcase, specifically the Norway Pavilion, where we'll be able to find the oh-so-controversial Frozen Ever After. And yes, while I understand why there's a group of people who hate this ride, it replaced Maelstrom, it brings fictional characters into World Showcase, Frozen is overdone, and so on and so forth, there is still also an even bigger group of guests who absolutely adore this attraction and the Frozen property as a whole, myself being one of them. I mean, let's face it, there is a reason this ride consistently has one of the longest wait times in the park. And for people who miss Maelstrom, at least Frozen pays a tribute, the ride boats and ride track are the same, the cute little puffins are still in the ride near the end, you can find a statue of the polar bear in the queue, and there's even a giant Maelstrom troll photo op right in the gift shop as you come out. And quick little side note, this Frozen gift shop is actually one of my favorites on Disney property. They sell a ton of cool art, toys, and winter clothes, so check that one out for a while if you ever get the chance, but I digress. Frozen Ever After simply keeps you immersed from the second you step inside the incredibly immersive queue to the second you walk out of that amazing gift shop. The audio animatronics are top notch, the terror of going backwards and facing a 28 foot drop make this a great attraction not only for younger audiences and fans of Frozen, but even some slight thrill seekers out there. And the music of Frozen being played throughout the entire 5 minute duration make this one unbelievably magical voyage that you will never forget. Speeding our way back over to Future World, we'll be able to hop in our custom-built Chevrolet Sim vehicles and take a high-octane fueled run through Test Track. This attraction is just exhilarating in every form of the word. From the speed test through straightaways, to the bank turns and hills you climb, to that signature 65 mile per hour stretch at the end, it is just a rush of adrenaline from start to finish. Not to mention since 2012, this attraction has had the Tron-esque overlay that I just personally find gorgeous. It really feels like you're just driving inside a simulation. A lot of people do complain about this new overlay and say it's just blackness and neon lines, but for myself, it's always kind of reminded me of that one episode of Fairly Odd Parents when Timmy goes into the computer and it's sort of that same style. I know it's not the same brand and that's a totally biased and nostalgic reason to like it, but still. 
test track just seems to bring good vibes to everyone who rides it. I have never once seen anyone upset during the queue, during the ride, or during the awesome exit with video games and Chevy cars all around. It is always nothing but smiles and excitement from the whole family, and I would highly recommend it to any family on any trip to the park. Oh, and it's got a single rider line. How awesome is that? So for our number one best attraction today at Epcot, we'll be hanging around in Future World, but actually heading right over to the icon of Epcot itself, the one and only Spaceship Earth. This 15 minute Omnimover dark ride takes passengers through the past, present, and future of human communication on Earth and how it's helped advance society as a whole, from prehistoric times to the invention of the alphabet to the invention of modern communication devices. And all of this is communicated, no pun intended, to the guests using insanely gorgeous and impressive animatronic work, sets that would blow your mind, an outstanding voiceover by Judy Dench, and it even ends with a small little video that's essentially a choose-it-yourself future adventure with your picture on small avatars. It's pretty funny and cute, you'll just have to trust me on that one. But anyway, yeah, Spaceship Earth is truly the definition of everything Epcot represents as a whole. Advancements into the future and how humans affect that very future each and every day. The same way Walt Disney himself wanted to shape and advance the future as we know it. So as one of the true final standing memories of the legendary experimental prototype Community of Tomorrow, Spaceship Earth easily takes its place as the best attraction in all of Walt Disney World's Epcot Center. By far. Alrighty folks, so that'll about wrap up the best and worst attractions you can find at Walt Disney World's Epcot Center. I really hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, comment, subscribe, and share the video around. It'd mean a lot and help out a ton. Also, leave in the comments what your favorite and least favorite attractions throughout Epcot are so we can start a conversation down there. But anyway, gang, with all that out of the way, this is Silver Stick signing out. I hope you have a great rest of your day, theme park fans. Peace.